excited about this episode because we are announcing our giveaway. We've been hyping this up. We've been so excited. We're announcing our giveaway and we're going to be cleaning the devices that are going to be in the giveaway. So make sure you guys watch the full episode because at the very end, we'll tell you how to enter. All right, let's run an intro. Let's go. Okay, dude, so like we said, we have our giveaway. We are officially announcing. We're going to show off everything right now that's going to be in the first ever Digi Dudes giveaway box we are doing. And the devices that we're going to be cleaning in this episode is going to be part of that giveaway. So we're going to have a nice and tip top shape for whoever wins the giveaway and show you guys step by step how to be cleaning your original DMs and original pendulums. So, let's get right into this. First things first, we have four packs of the brand new set of Digimon. Then we've got two of these Atmon minifigure gotcha boxes. Right here, we've already opened this up once before on the channel, and we pulled that dude right there. I remember that time. Yeah, so we got two of those in there. We've got some Digimon stickers. We got Dukemon, Burning Gra I mean Shine Greymon, and then there was aha! It got mixed in over here. We also have Omegamon. Then we've got one pack of original 1999 Japanese Digimon cards, but these aren't just any packs. These are special ones that were in vending machines. And out of the whole 30 packs that got loaded into the vending machine, there was only three packs with holographic rares in them. Luckily, I was able to cherry pick that. And this is a guaranteed holographic rare in here. And we happen to have two more for us to open in just a sec. Yeah. Then we have both the Digi Dudes cards. And we have every one of the Digi Dude stickers that have been made. Our original logo, the older logo, and then our new logo. Man. But it's not just that. Man, we, we updated that logo a lot. Over the past three years, absolutely, Debbie Dude. We've been doing this for three years. I thought it was two. No. And we also have a 20th year, a DM 20th that I painted myself with a really fun paint job on here. It looks really cool. Thank you, Debbie Dude. And the buttons like kind of like blend in. And then our final items are these Japanese DM version 1 and Japanese Pendulum version 1. So both devices that really kicked off Digimon for what it is right here in this box. We are very excited about this. We have a lot of goodies. And as always, we do a giveaway every year at the beginning of the year, but I wanted to do something special because you guys have been so amazing to us over all these years. This is our biggest giveaway yet. I'm really excited about it. Let's pop, oh, move the stickers. And now let's pop open these packs. See, we got yeah. two. So one for Debbie Dude to open, one for me to open, and you'll see what we get, what type of things are going to be in here. All right. So we got one. I don't know the name of this card. Oh, Dragomon. Maybe some Metal Greymon this type. Whoa. Nice. Maybe I'll be able to read some of the words. The promotional card. And Snymon. I got Defamon! I uh, got holographic De Defamon! Alright, hold on, Debbie Dude. Alright, so Debbie Dude pulled all the same commons as us, but he got this Devamon. Can I please keep that card? Absolutely, Debbie Dude. I got a holographic! Oh, that's so cool. All right, guys. So now we're going to get into the actual repairing of these devices. What you're not repairing, we're, they work fine. What we're going to do is clean them and make sure they work amazingly. So what you're going to need is you're going to need a toolkit. Anything with a small set of screwdrivers. Mine is just a cheap computer repair kit that I bought on Amazon. 
I think it, it was less than 20 bucks I'm and it comes so with every tool you're going to possibly need plus way more you're never going to use. I'm so glad I called dibs on this pack. <laughs> and then you're going to need isopropylene alcohol, a.k.a. rubbing alcohol. Long as it's a 90% alcohol, you're going to be fine. Um, some people will tell you you can use vinegar for things, but you only need that as if things are really rusty and um, or have like a lot of battery acid corrosion on them. You're going to use that. You'll use the vinegar to help take that off. But then you're going to immediately need to go in with the rubbing alcohol to take the vinegar off. Because if you leave it on, it will eat through all your parts. This will not eat through any of your parts. Because the alcohol evaporates pretty much right away. And then the only other thing you're going to need is some Q-tips. Just to kind of guide your alcohol where you want to put it. You put, dip the Q-tip in the alcohol. And then clean your connections. So... Let's get right into that right now. No more hype and anything else. And then again, at the end of the video, we'll tell you how to enter the giveaway. You excited about this, Debbie, dude? Eee. So am I. I love working on devices. All right, guys, let's get right into these things. All right, dudes. So if you're wondering why I've got a play mat down here, it's just to prevent the screws from like rolling around and bouncing as much in case I drop something because I found that just having a play mat down works way better than just the counter surface because screws will bounce and roll a lot more on the regular counter surface. So that's just a pro tip right there. If you have a play mat for any card games you play or anything, just lay it down and it'll help you just keep track of your parts a bit better. I also like to grab a little cup to put my rubbing alcohol in and that way I'm not constantly going back to the big jug. And preparation is important in my opinion. Having all of your tools and things that you'll need out and ready right off the beginning is always good and always handy. That way you don't have to stop and lose track of things and get up and move around. I also like to use these Q-tips with the pointed tip here because you can get in tight places a lot easier and nicer. There, as you guys can see there on the screen, just get, be able to get in those spots just makes it a lot easier. And look at that. That's just dirt. Ah, that's dirt. That's 25 years of Digimon dirt right there. So these just tend to work better for that. They're also a tighter, um, like, swab. They're not, not as loose, too. And it just makes that a whole lot easier. Um, you don't have to. Regular Q-tips will work fine. It's just what I use. Um, these ones aren't even modeling ones. Modeling Q-tips are even smaller tips. This is a makeup Q-tip that I bought at Target. So it's just to sit, it went in the makeup section. I was able to find this one really easily. All right, guys. Now that I let you guys, now that I talked about all my tools and everything, let's get right into this. I'm going to start with the pendulum because I love pendulums. I'm a pendulum fanboy. Only reason. We're going to start by cleaning this one up. I've already put batteries in them and tested them, and it works. But like I said, we're just going to clean it up for the giveaway and make it look beautiful and show you guys how to do that anyway. Now, on both of these, they have had a screw replaced on the battery case, which is very common with these OG devices. Somebody's lost a screw at some point of owning these, and they replaced it themselves. This one screw right there is the replacement. These flat ones like this is the original pendulum screws. So just letting you guys know. But it's the right size, so whoever put it in did a good job there. Because I've seen some weird things shoved in these devices. Now I'm just going to take it and put the screws off to the side here. Sometimes I'll have a tray out and that way I can keep track of my screws a bit better. But for this project, all I'm going to do is just take them out and set them aside. You don't normally have to take out the screws in the battery case. I'm just M. Because um, honestly, the battery screws don't screw into anything. There's no peg holes behind them. They don't go into the board. But I do like to do it personally. And then we'll just pop out the rest of these screws real quick. All right, now that you've got the screws out, this is a really, really important step right here. So I want you guys to be very careful when you do this part. And this is for any OG Digimon. Number one, it's gonna be a little stiff 
because they're not supposed to be opened and they're old. So you kind of just take your time with it. Don't force it open. Be really gentle. There we go. Now, like I said, there's a couple of things here. It's really important. Number one, right here, the chain is held on by this little pin. This pin comes out and it will fall out if you don't take it out first and set it aside. And you'll lose it and then you won't be able to put your chain back on. Now the more important part of this step is to be insanely gentle as you're opening because your speaker is mounted to the back case here. And these wires are old and they get brittle and you can easily end up breaking one of these wires and damaging it. So let's take a good look at the inside here. This particular device is really clean on the inside. The battery connections are really nice. Let's grab the screwdriver here just to point and look. Battery connections here are really clean. They are really nice. They honestly do not need to be cleaned up at all. But the important thing we will clean up is the pendulum here. Because we want to be able to make sure our shakes count properly. And that's really important on these OG pendulums um, to clean that pendulum every so often. Especially if you got a brand new, like if you got a device and it's the first time you're using it, you're probably going to want to clean that pendulum because it's got years, 20 plus years for this device of gunk and things just built up on it, which will affect your shakes. And as you guys know, with these pendulums, the shakes are important. You want to get a good count on them. But we'll just look at the screws here. I'll point them out for you to be able to take the board out completely too. They got one right here, one right there, one right here, and there's our fourth and final screw right there. This one right here, you will have to remove to get the board out, and you'll have to remove this one also, taking apart the complete pendulum mechanism, which is a pain in the butt. If you do not have to take apart your pendulum, to get to the front, I highly recommend do not do it. If your buttons are working fine and there's no screen issues, leave your pendulum together because this step right here is really difficult to get back together, especially if this is your first time doing anything like this. You really don't want to open up that can of worms because the problems you're going to run into is these solder points here are really brittle, especially on this part. So this wire can break and then your pendulum won't work at all. And then this little like hair thin spring right here is really difficult to get back in because this is th um, three parts to create this pendulum. There's this arm right here, there's this part right here, and then there's a little plate right here. And to get all of them to line back up correctly and the spring back on is a nightmare. So I'm going to show you how to clean that pendulum without touching any of that. And then you'll be able to have your pendulum back up and running and running very smooth and beautiful. And then on the DM, I'll take apart the front board there and show you guys how to clean the battery connections in case your buttons aren't working that well. And because that's one, that's the first thing you would do if your buttons aren't working well is to clean the connections on them. Okay, so I'm going to grab a fresh Q-tip. Put that off to the side and fill my little cup up. Like I said, with you using the rubbing alcohol, the isopropylene alcohol here, you do not have to worry about it like damaging things as long as you don't go like soak anything, because the alcohol itself will will um, dry off. So I'm going to gently hold the pendulum in place and just work the Q-tip around the front of the pendulum here. And you just want to be gentle with this. This isn't anything that needs a lot of force. It's not anything that you need to manhandle this with. Even what I'm doing might be a little excessive amount of pressure, but I've done this a, hundreds of times. Here, so I'm a little more practiced. And then once we get there, that's actually not terrible here, dirt-wise. Like, I've seen much dirtier when I've gotten, like, new devices in. And then I'm just going to take the dry end and just kind of go over it again. Oh, 
And again, not too bad. Now the other part we're gonna clean is right in here, this little rubber spot where the hammer actually hits and connects on. So I'm gonna grab another Q-tip, get that in my rubbing alcohol. Now this spot tends to be the dirtier of the spots. Sorry guys, I'll move it a little bit further away here, make it easier for you to see what I'm doing. And I'm just going back and forth with it on the rubbing with the rubbing alcohol. It's nothing crazy. And again, Kind of want to be a little on the gentle side here, just because these parts are small. You don't want to mess anything up. And then might as well just hit the hammer again and just kind of go around the front face of it, as you can see here. Now, like I said, that part tends to be the dirtier part. Like you see right here, right? That's all right there from that rubber connection where the hammer hits. Now you have successfully cleaned the pendulum and it's probably hard to see here on the camera but it is a noticeable difference between the front of the hammer here and the back of the hammer over here. It's nice, it's a lot shinier and that's all you need to do to clean your pendulum to get your pendulum working correctly. I do want to mention if you are going to be taking the board off be extremely careful with this screw and this one right here. They are very small and they have a bad habit of the screw heads breaking off when you're going to screw them in. Um, my Wing Guardians pendulum, not my one I had as a kid, but my other one I got again as an adult. My screw head broke off in here and I currently have a screw broken in the mount. So I either have to solder this plate on in place or try to get that broken screw out of there. So like I said, guys, be really careful. Even if you're not, even if you're doing everything right, mistakes still happen. Like I said, there was nothing I did wrong when I was putting it in. I was just tightening it down and the screw broke because they're extremely thin. They're about half the thinness of this screw, half the thickness of this screw right here. So like I said, insanely thin screw. They break really easily. All right, so that's it for cleaning up your pendulum. That's all you have to do. Like I said, you can go over the connections here. You know, I'll just do one just to show you guys. But this one does not need it at all. It is really clean. But you just go over the batteries connection spots with a little bit of rubbing alcohol. You go over there and then you go over this spot in here. Then you hit this one, that one in there, and then you could also do this plate down here too, because that's all part of the battery system. But this one's really clean, it wasn't necessary to do. I always just like to take a, the dry side and just go over it afterwards. I've heard you do not have to do that, that is just me and a little OCD of mine. And as you guys can see right here, it's printed 1998, because that is the year that this device was originally made. Gosh darn, that takes me back. Okay, now we're going to take our pin, put the pin back in. The pendulums are the only ones I've ever seen that uses the pin system like this for the chain. I've never seen any other ones do it, but at the same time, I don't really open up many of my devices unless I have an issue. And now you just want to be gentle and kind of work everything back in place a little bit there. There we go. And throw our screws back in. Again, if you're having trouble with your pendulums not registering the correct amount of shakes, Go clean that pendulum first. Go clean that up and get that, get all the dirt and, dirt and gunk out of there first before you do anything or consider it being broken because that's most likely what's happened. And then 
with any screw you put in these devices, you never, ever, ever, ever want to over tighten. You just go until they're snug. That's all you have to do. Once you start feeling a little bit of resistance, stop because these are old screws. They're old screw heads on them. You will run the risk of stripping out your screws really easily and then you won't be able to get them back in or out. There we go. Nice and snug. Throw the battery case in right now and I'll throw some batteries in both of these once we're done. But I'm just going to throw the case back on now so we don't lose our screws. I'll put the replacement screw back in the place it came from. Now going from the pendulum to the DMs, the pendulums use smaller screws than the DMs do. So you're not going to have be using the same screwdrivers or the same screw heads here if you got an interchangeable one like I have because the screws on them are much bigger. Again, these ones were replaced by somebody, but they did replace them with the correct size. And you can see here on the back that those are bigger screws than what we just took out of the pendulum here. But let's get into this one. Talking about preparedness here, I do not have the correct screwdriver. One second. Instead of switching screw heads, I just grabbed the correct size screwdriver I already had because I'm going to need this screw head back anyway. Again, like I said, you don't have to take the screws out for the battery case. You can leave them in and just take the four post screws out, the four corner screws. But I always do. And looking at the inside already, I can see this one's pretty clean, but not as clean as the other one was. We do have the original factory stickers on it, though, and that's pretty awesome. Like so, we'll get right in this and we'll clean them up. This one, I was... These original, very first DMs use much longer screws and different ones than any other Digimon device of the same series. So, like, the version 1... Screws are definitely different than the version 2, 3, 4, and 5. And then also 6. But that one's so rare, I've never even seen one in person. And then we'll pop those out. Like I said, the, all the other ones use a different size screw. The screwdriver will still be the same. The screw head size is the same, but these are way longer than the rest. Okay, now that we got our screws out, once again, very, very important step we're going to be doing right now. Be super, super careful with this. You are going to gently open it up, take your chain off, and very, very gently open this device up. Because again, the speaker um, connections, the speaker wires here are very brittle and fragile, and they will break very, very easily on you. So we to avoid that, be very gentle, try not to open it up too far, and here we go. All right, so the version one, again, I'm going to say is different than the rest, because by the time the version one came out, by the time they started making more, they decided there's a better way to lay out things in the boards than what we see here. But everything will still function the same. Like, all the steps I'm going to be doing with you are still going to be the same what we're going to be doing. But you might have screws in different places if you're doing this on a version 2, a version 3, a version 4, version 5, or version 6. So as you could already see... The battery connection spots are in different places than the pendulums are. We've got one here, one there. We've got one here on this side and one there on that side, which these ones we can clean when the case is back up, back shut, but these ones we will clean right now with it open. And then instead of having four screws holding the board in, it only has two on the version one. Other versions will have more, but again, like I said, 
They're pretty simple and easy to recognize, especially on a DN. Pendulums, they're all laid out the same. Every one of the pendulums will look the same inside from each other. And that one has more screws as we just went over and shown in different places too, serving different functions. But these ones, the only screws you're gonna have once you get it open are the ones holding the board in itself. So let's clean these connections up right now. Grab another Q-tip here, get it wet. And you're just gonna gently just go over it. If they are very corroded, very rusty, like I mentioned earlier in the video, you can go through with white vinegar and use that to clean it up. It'll take the corrosion off, but then you have to immediately go over it with rubbing alcohol afterwards and take off the vinegar. Because if you don't, it will eat through your parts over time and can damage the board itself. Cleany, cleany here. Like I said, I put batteries in both of these and tested it, and they both worked. So I'm not super concerned with like the connections not being good or anything. Like I said, like I said, everything seems to be working fine. Just gonna go over and clean things up a bit. On the version one here, the buttons weren't super responsive. I had to push them a few times. To get them to work and register so we're going to take the front board off of this one and clean those button connections like we talked about i'll show you how to do that there we go looks good all right dudes oh almost knocked my screws over Sometimes the screws do not want to come out very easily. And again, it's 25 years old. Screws are going to be stuck. I'm going to show you guys right now by dropping this on the mat why I like using the mat. It bounced, but it didn't go far. It was right there. And I, I dropped it. Like, that was pretty high up for me working. Like, I would never drop it from that high up. But it bounced, and it pretty much stayed within place. It's not going to pop off. I use magnetic screwdrivers. Okay, for this next step here, we're going to need to be really careful for this one. We're going to gently want to wiggle the board out, and you want to hold this part to make sure it doesn't go anywhere and you don't lose this connection right here. You can gently wiggle the board out. Take it out. I like to leave this in if I don't have to take it off. And then we're gonna flip the board over right here. And now we've removed the front plate and we've got to the front of the screen here. Insanely, be insanely careful with this screen. It is held in with pressure. If it pops off, it is very, very difficult to get your screens lined back up in the correct positions for it to work. And you could have like fading issues, um, pixel issues, and things like that if you don't. If I can avoid touching the screen, I always do. Obviously, if I have to fix the screen and do some screen work, that's different. But if I don't have to, if the screen's working fine like this one is, I don't touch it. I'm going to leave it right where it is and not touch it at all. I am going to pop these off. And we are going to clean these connections right here. And then we'll do the same on the back side of these buttons too. We're going to clean them. And there we go. And that's all we're going to do here is just go over them with the alcohol. Go over all the lines on the board and the actual connections themselves. And that is a lot of dirt right there. That is 25 years of Digimon dirt built up. 
And that's probably why our buttons are not working well. So we're going to go over this again. Just to make sure. This one side of the Q-tip sucks. <laughs> not very good. And we're still pulling up a lot of dirt, as you can see. Still a lot of dirt, as you can see there. Probably grab another one and just do better safe than sorry. This time we'll start at the bottom because we've been starting at the top. There we go. We are still pulling a blood dirt, but it is looking way cleaner and way nicer than it did before. Definitely looking good. We'll grab a, no a little bit more. We'll do a little bit more here. I do not recommend holding it like this. I highly recommend putting it back down flat. The only reason I am doing this is to show you guys better on camera. If you're gonna be working on your own project, your own device, lay it flat, it's a lot more stable, a lot more secure, and you're less likely to bump into that screen right there. All right, so that's looking way better now, way cleaner. Since I have it open, I am going to go and clean up that gunk around the screen there going to be very gentle light light pressure with the rubbing alcohol let the alcohol do the work and just take off that grime that spots a little more stubborn but working our way there just little by little like I said let the alcohol do the work don't use any force or pressure, really, because we don't want to end up disturbing that screen. But there we go. That's a lot better. It's not really going to be seen. Because the shell will cover most of that, but it will look better than what it was. And then I'll go back and clean it up from the outside, too. And then now, we'll clean the button connections here. Buttons themselves. Get them cleaned up. Get the gunk off of them. Sorry, guys. I'm a little off to the side there. It's kind of hard to look through the camera at what I'm doing. A lot easier to look over the camera, but sometimes I miss the miss my mark on the camera. Sorry about that. All right, get those looking nice and clean. You can definitely see the dirt there, but we're looking better. I got a little more alcohol in there than needed, so let's just go dry that up a bit. The rest will evaporate off. And as you guys can see there, we definitely cleaned up a lot more. And you know what? Let's hit this with another round. Because that's still way dirtier than I would like. And I want this device working beautifully for whoever wins the giveaway. I don't want you guys to have any problems. So let's clean this one up a bit more. Should we clean the reset button? Yeah, why not? So who resets their Digimon anyway? Nobody resets your Digimon. You just let your Digimon go. You raise them. You love them. And then eventually they pass on their own and you start a new one. You don't need to reset it. Alright. That's definitely looking much better. Alright. So. For the buttons. The easiest way to do it is to just take your... Oops. 
And that popped out. For the buttons, the easiest way to do it is to just take them. Actually, I'm going to clean the inside of that up before we do this. Because that is full of gunk in there. Look at that. Little globs of gunk coming out of these buttonholes. It's going to take a sec to clean them up. Since we put all that nice effort of cleaning up the buttons themselves. Ugh. Alright. Here we go. So, put the buttons in first before you try to put Flip the board over. It's way easier. And then now, I recommend it, making sure that this piece is lined up in the little slots it goes in. And then just taking this, flipping it, and setting it down gently in place. And then opening it back up very gently in place. And now just kind of maneuver your things around. Getting it all lined up back where it belongs. This piece popped out. Not a big deal. We will just set it back in place when we get to that step. Now let's put our screws back in. Here we go, and throw our screws back in. Again, do not over tighten. Everything should go in pretty smoothly. If you have to force it, you have an issue. And it's no bueno for anybody. And all you need to do is have them snug. Yes, the screen is held in with pressure like we talked about, but if everything's put in back correctly you won't have to worry about that like I said this part coming off isn't a big deal it just fits back in place really easily and then all we have to do now is just close up everything and we're gonna be a-okay so for because of that part popped out I want to keep it in the right place I'm gonna close it from the front to the back and then once they're together then everything will be in correctly and I can just close it up. So I'm going to actually take the chain, put it on this side first, close it up like that. And then now flip it around and put my screws back in. Okay. Before I went around and did each one in order. Really, I normally like to go in a diagonal to make sure pressure is held in the correct places and I don't have to worry about like holding things down. Oops, see, I got a little bit of resistance there. Like I said, guys, you don't have to force anything. If you feel a little bit of resistance, just back it out, try it again, and then You'll get it right eventually. There we go. Let's try this. Take the whole screw out and put it back in again. Turn it back a little bit. This one's not wanting to line up right and go in easily. So let's just take the whole screw out. And then I'll try another spot and we'll go back to that one. There we go. That one went in nice and smooth. I'll try this screw in a different hole, maybe. Who knows? Anything's possible. Yeah, it's the screw itself. It's not wanting to go in well, easily. But there we go. Throw another screw in. Last one. And then just go around and just make sure they're snug, but not over-tightened. All right, so now we're going to grab that 
Q-tip and the rubbing alcohol again. And we're just going to do the inside ones like we talked about before. Just hitting these ones in here and this one right here. I guess I could have taken the whole piece when it came out and just cleaned the entire piece in one go since it came out. And it comes out easily and it goes back in super easily. But if you guys want to deal with that, that's an easy way to do it. Fast and quick and easy way to do it. Alright, I'm going to grab batteries and we'll test both these devices and then we'll clean the outside of the shells in just a sec. Alright, I got my batteries. Let's plug them in and we'll check both devices. Just drop them straight in best you can. Of course, I mess it right up. What? Wouldn't be me. Okay. There we go. There we go. Already starting to beep a little bit. Awesome. We got our egg. Buttons are working beautifully so far. Awesome. Everything's working great. This device is going to be beautiful and functioning completely fine for whoever wins the giveaway. Alright, let's pop the batteries out. I'll close the case up. Just snug. Still a little bit of battery power in the device itself. You can hear it beep a second ago. A little trick though, if you're going to replace the batteries and you want to keep the Digimon you have, if you connect them with another device and then like put like a rubber band around them, it will feed power from the other device and just enough to keep it going while you replace the batteries and not lose your Digimon. I've seen that trick online, people doing it on Instagram. It was really cool. I had no idea you can do anything like that. So now let's take this one. We will pop it open, throw some batteries in it. Oh, screws not quite out all the ways. There we go. Like I said, I just saw, you guys can see there, I just dropped it, it didn't go anywhere. And before I dropped it from pretty hard, pretty high up is why it bounced so much. But they stay like pretty much right in place when you do that. Let's drop the batteries in. Put the case back on. That beautiful beep started. This time though, we are going to put the batteries, put the case on all the ways. Because I want to test the pendulum in here. And make sure the pendulum is working really well. And I'll show you guys exactly how to do that. So we're just going to tighten it up snug. Throw both batteries, both screws in just in case. Alright, there we go. It's in nice and snug. Looking good here. Buttons are working fine on it. Which I knew they worked fine to begin with. But, just wanted to show you guys, no problems with the buttons here. Now what we're going to do is I'm going to hit the reset button and the A button at the same time. Oop, didn't do them at the same time. Come on. There we go. And now we are in the factory um, factory mode, is what this is. So now what we're going to do is we're going to scroll through our buttons here until we see this screen right here. It tells us we are using the version 1, and these numbers down here are going to be counting our pendulum shakes. So let's do this. We go 1. Didn't count. 1, 2... 
We are not counting, guys. Sometimes the pendulums on there just get kind of stiff, and if you loosen them up by shaking them a lot, sometimes that will help it. If not, I'm going to go back through this and try cleaning it up some more. And try cleaning up the different connections there on just the pendulum hammer. So, I'm going to shake it a whole lot first. Okay, shook it up a whole lot. Let's take it out of factory mode here. And then we're going to hit the reset. And then we're going to try this again. Because I always want to start from a clean count. You don't have to, but I want to. Nope, that does reset. There we go. Our pendulum is not registering well. To be honest, it could just be the device needs to be cleaned up again, or my batteries cannot be great in here. Because if your batteries suck, your pendulum is one of the first things that will stop working on you. So let's pop this thing back open and then I'll go through and I'll clean all the other spots too and make sure everything is working correctly here. Because I do know the pendulum was working and as you guys can see there it is working but it's not responding well. We're not going through each shake like we should. Every time I hear that pendulum hammer hit we should be getting one registering there. And like I said, I want these to be working 100% tip-top shape before they go out in the giveaway. I don't want anyone to receive the giveaway and have any problems. There we go. Pop out a couple more screws. Do, 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 do. There we go. Again, super duper careful during this step. Super duper careful not to damage that speaker. Because I do not know how to solder and I am not going to be... I'm going to having a hard time if I damage that and trying to find somebody who can solder for me. Okay. Got my rubbing alcohol again. And then now I'm just going to go over everything in this pendulum connection here. I'll go over this part right here too. On the board. Again, super, super gentle. You do not want to accidentally pop any of these wires off. Go over the rest of this. And then we're also going to go over this too. Clean this part up also. Clean that little spot there. And then this time we're going to go through and we're going to clean the hammer again. But I'm just going to go around the whole thing this time. Alright guys. Hopefully this time we will fix any of those issues we have. Because the pendulum is working, like we said. It's just not working well. 
you really got to either put some force into it, it seemed like, in order to get those shakes to register, or shake it a bunch, and that's not good anyway, because... If you're trying to get exactly four shakes, you don't want to have to shake it a bunch and mess that up. You guys want to have nice mega hits on here. So we want to have that nice and clean for you. Especially since with how difficult it is on the version one to get those mega hits and those high evolutions. There we go. Get right in there and get that cleaned up. We're still pulling up a good amount of dirt in there, so maybe I just didn't do it enough, and that's probably what's happening here. I have this weird flat Q-tip. Maybe I should switch to that one. Like the one, the Q-tips I'm using, like I said, they're from a makeup section. So they came with like a whole bunch. Like the one I had was like a multi-box with like different ones. And it came with some other weird ones like I never needed or used. Come on, come out of the box. Like this one. I don't know what that's for makeup wise or anything, but it also has a point on it. So I know I can try this. I've never tried this side. Will it fit? Can I go like just like an up and down motion? No, it won't fit. I was wondering if I can just get it in there and do like an up and down motion with it. But I can use this side. There we go. Get right in there. Get that nice and clean. You can take this screw out and take the whole unit out and clean it that way. But like I said, the screws are very, very fragile, super easy to break. So I don't recommend doing it unless you're really having problems and you really want to clean that part a little bit better. Like if you can't get down in there. This is where I would definitely recommend using a um, hobby uh, cotton swab one. Because they do have a tighter, sharper point on them than these makeup ones do. I'm just trying to get down in there a little bit better. But it's not necessary. I think we may, I think we managed it now. Let's close it back up. We'll try it again. And see how it goes. If I could pick up this little tiny pin here. There we go. Pin is in place. Chain is back on. Flip that down. Let's throw our screws in. Here we go. Doo, 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 doo. Really, really like the magnet tip screwdrivers. They are just super useful. There we go. Super handy, super useful. The magnet tips makes it a lot easier and just not losing screws. And most magnet tip screwdrivers really aren't that much more expensive than a normal screwdriver of the same size or anything. Maybe a dollar more or something like that. All right, that's in snug. Let's throw our batteries back in. There we go. Whoop. Picked up both at the same time. Uh, 
There we go. I really don't have to put this last screw in just to be able to test it, but I want those batteries to sit nice. Because like I said, if you have battery issues, like the batteries are dying, it will definitely cause you pendulum issues on these devices. Okay, so let's go back to factory mode. There we go. Managed to get it the first try this time. So, there we go. Alright, so we're back to the screen here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Working beautifully now. Alright, let's do this again. Let's do five quick shakes and we'll see. Make sure we read at 15. One, two, three, four, five. Awesome. Alright, we are working beautifully now. Let's pop these batteries out. There we go. So the rest of this is literally just taking these little cotton swabs like I have, making sure it's just not too wet here, and then just going over the rest of the device in all the icky spots, places that dirt likes to collect, and just clean those up. And then go over the screen. And just clean the device. So, like I said, guys, cleaning your devices can make a world of difference. This one, the pendulum wasn't working correctly, wasn't registering all the shakes. Now it is. This one, the buttons weren't working well, and now they are. So, simple fixes for your devices to make sure they're working great. Again, if you get a new device from, like you buy it online, anywhere you want to buy these OG devices from, I highly recommend just doing these things just to make sure they're working um, well, especially the pendulum. If you ever get a new pendulum, uh, OG pendulum, check that pendulum there, clean it really well first, bring it into the factory mode like I showed you guys to make sure the shakes are registering well and that it's gonna be working great for you. So now we got two beautiful devices. I'm gonna take the rest of the time now off camera to just finish cleaning the outside of the shells, but we're done with these things here and they're looking awesome. I think these turned out amazing. What do you think, Debbie Dude? How did Daddy do on these? 10 out of 10. 10 out of 10 here. We've got the pendulums working great on this one. We've got the buttons working amazing on this one. And both shells have been cleaned up and looking beautiful. They do. I even managed to get most of the rust off on the screws in the back here to shine them up and have them looking nice. These screws were nice and clean, so we didn't have to worry about that. But these are going to be amazing devices for somebody. Daddy did a good job, didn't I? Yeah, you did. Thank you. Yeah, like I said, these are going to be amazing devices for somebody. I hope this is helpful to you to let you know how to do these things. Because you can easily take a damaged or broken device and bring it up and having it function amazingly. Both of these devices had picked, when I bought them, showed that they were functioning, they put batteries in them, but then they said they couldn't tell if they were working or not on the listings I bought them from. So I was able to get them for a really good price because of that, and that's a huge thing I do all the time for buying my devices. I'll buy untested devices because, for the most part, I know with a little bit of cleaning and work like this, I can get it to function. Unless something's actually broken, most of the time you can... Buy an untested device and have it working fine if you can get them for super cheap. You will go through a lot of these Q-tips. I go through a ton of them doing this, but it's just part of the process, dudes. Just keep that in mind. Get a full box. Make sure you have plenty to do it, especially if it's a really dirty one like the DM version 1 was. But I'm really excited about this. I'm really happy. Like we said, we have the giveaway now. These are officially being added to the box now as part of the giveaway. And if you want to know how to enter that giveaway, all you have to do is be subscribed and fill out the Google form down in the description. The giveaway is going to be running until April 1st. So you have from this video posting to April 1st to enter. I want to give as many people as a chance to win, and it's one entry per person. 
Unless you are a Patreon supporter, then you get an additional three entries automatically for just being a Patreon supporter. Any tier level, any paid tier level, you automatically get a three extra entries. So, repeating, be subscribed to the channel, fill out the Google form in the description. Every video posting up until April 1st will also have the, the Google form in the description. And then if you want bonus entries, go check out our Patreon while you're down in the description there. If you join our Patreon at any one of the paid levels there, you get three bonus entries to the giveaway. I want as many people to have a chance to win this as possible. This is not restricted to any countries, so anyone can enter. All right. I would do that if you, I were you. <laughs> if you enjoy this video, if you found it helpful, make sure you... Dig a blast that like button. And touch view the subscribe button mm -hmm. down below. It helps us out a ton. Thank you to everybody who's already subscribed. You guys are amazing. Thank you to anyone who likes, comments, subscribes, watches. You guys are all amazing. Special huge thanks to our Patreon supporters. You guys are absolutely digitastic. Without you, we wouldn't be able to do fun things like this, be able to do giveaways like this now. You guys are amazing. I can't thank you enough. Thank you so much to our Patreon supporters. If you guys want to help support the channel, go check out our Patreon. Link is down in the description there. Fill out that Google form too while you're there. Enter the giveaway. I hope this was helpful to you. I hope you enjoyed everything you saw here today because I had a lot of fun doing this. I love working and restoring devices like this. It makes me feel like a digital historian over here bringing life back to broken Digimon devices. And it's relatively simple and easy. And if you follow these steps, I feel like anyone can do this. Right, Debbie Dude? Yes. Maybe next time we'll have you do it. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> I can do something. All right. As always, from me, my family, to you, have, have a, a Digitastic Day! day!